This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Today on CityCast Houston, it seems like every week there's a new cyber or phone scam Houstonians need to worry about. Heck, just last year, scammers got away with $1.3 billion by impersonating government officials. So how do we protect ourselves here in H-Town? Dr. Alan Harper, a cybersecurity EVP at T-Rex Solutions, is joining me to explain the common scams you should know about and how to protect yourself and loved ones from them. It's Monday, March 25th. I'm Raheel Ramzanali, and here's what Houston's talking about. Dr. Harper, welcome into CityCast Houston. How are you? I'm blessed. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Before we get into some tips and recommendations from you on how to protect ourselves from hacks and cyber crimes and all that, what was the first cyber threat that you remember or you fell victim to on the internet? Well, fortunately, I haven't uh, fallen victim to any, but I can tell you a quick story about my wife that happened. And, um, yeah. She almost fell victim to a phone scam. I heard her answer the phone in another room, and uh, she, soon she started to cry. And so I walked over into the other room, and, and I found out that there was somebody who was pretending to be a police officer, and they wanted her to leave the house and go to a location in town. And they were trying to coerce her to go to that location. And, of course, I jumped on the phone and that ended it. But it just was a, a reminder to me that it could happen to any of us, even the spouse of, you know, so-called cyber expert. Yeah, my coworker one time got a call from a scammer saying that, you know, we've kidnapped your mom and you have to come deliver X amount of dollars at this CVS and you can't call the cops and everyone was just in a panic. And it's a scary situation because you don't know if it's real or not, right? And it is one of those moments where you just don't know what to do. And hopefully this conversation will help with that. You know, my first memory of an internet crime or cyber threat was on AOL. And I don't know if our younger listeners know about AOL and the chat rooms, but there used to be a feature where you could get punted and somebody would basically just overwhelm your chat room with messages until your computer crashes and it was the worst thing ever and look things are getting a lot more sophisticated now and scammers scammed people out of 1.3 billion dollars by pretending to be government officials tech support customer service reps how are these scammers usually getting people to send money over dr harper well usually what they're going to do the first thing is going to do is attempt to leverage some form of trust so they're going to come off with some form of authority or someone that you're familiar with. And then next, they're going to leverage some form of fear. And they're going to put intense pressure on you of some type of consequence. Uh, and they're going to uh, try to get you to be afraid of being arrested or fired or harmed in some way. And then finally, they're going to want you to take some kind of action. And uh, they're going to attempt to gain access to your phone or have you download something or take some action that could open you up further to risk. Now, these are more traditional phone call scams, right? What about some cyber scams that we should be aware of? The number one problem that we have on the internet right now is uh, people are reusing their passwords on various sites. And we all do it uh, to some degree. And when you do that, um, you open yourself up because what can happen is uh, they could hack a site that has your information on it and your password and then they could reuse that password on other sites. And that's how they often get us. And um, along the way, what they'll do is they'll collect up our personal data. And then they use that whenever they call us to convince us that they know us. Gotcha. So it starts with that password hack and they get all your information and then they call you and they build up that trust and information almost where they know what they're talking about. And that's where the act happens, right? Where they'll ask you to send money. So when that happens, they're asking you to send money or telling you to open up an account or whatever it is, right? 
what do people do, right? Because again, you feel so helpless. You don't know if this is true or if it's not. What do you recommend when it comes to safety? Well, there's a number of things that you can do. The first thing that you want to do is, you know, if we're talking particularly about phones, you want to make sure that you limit access to your phone use to people that you love and trust. Mm -hmm. And so what I recommend and what I've done for years is use a service called donotcall.gov. And that's a government service that um, that you can put your phone numbers on, and it then uh, restricts these callers from calling you by law. This would be, you know, people who are just trying to um, spam you or call you, uh, you know, telemarketers per se. The next thing that you can do is you can uh, cancel your home service if you don't need it. I personally haven't used my home phone service for more than twenty years, uh, but if you must keep your home service. Just be aware that the caller ID service can be spoofed or faked. The next thing that you want to do is you want to set your personal phone to ring only if uh, someone is in your contacts list. And that will eliminate a lot of these scam or uh, telemarketing calls. Now, when we switch to the computer, you want to make sure that you practice what we call good hygiene on your computer. So we want to keep all the software updated. We want to use... Uh, a more secure browser, if you can. I recommend a browser called Brave, uh, B-R-A-V-E. And that's uh, a good browser. It's more secure than the one that comes on your computer and laptop. Mm. The next thing that you want to do is you want to create a very long password. And you want to use unique passwords on every site that you go to. And I know that sounds really hard to do. But what you can do is you can use a password manager. Uh, I prefer a tool called LastPass. It's all one word, uh, last pass. And that tool will allow you to manage your passwords all in one spot. Now, if you're going to do that, make sure that you enable two-factor authentication, which means that you're going to need your phone or some other device to access that password. And that's a really good best practice that I can highly recommend. The last thing I would recommend is just make sure that you think before you click and uh, your finances may depend on it is think before you click, right? That's so important. I remember one time one of my bosses or what we thought was my boss was texting different people at the company to buy Apple gift cards. Or you get links via text messages during the holidays from UPS or FedEx saying, hey, we can't deliver your package. Send us your correct address. What do you do here? And look, naturally, everyone just wants to click on those and be like, wait, I am expecting a package here. I need this package. I think one of the things that I've started practicing is if I get a text message or a link from anybody, I don't click on it. I just go onto the official website and try logging in, creating an account, making sure that everything is kosher, right? Because those text messages where you just like click on it ASAP, a lot of trouble can happen from that. Yeah, that's right. And, and like I was mentioning, what they'll do is they'll collect your information from other sites. So it's very realistic and very compelling, the story that they're telling you. Mm. Uh, in the case of your boss, uh, that's what they'll try to do. They'll try to impersonate your leadership at your company. And we call that spear phishing. It's when they're coming in, you know, very in a very targeted manner and they have some information and it's very compelling. Uh, and usually they're trying to get you to do something that will cause some type of financial transaction, either by yourself or by the company. Let's talk about senior citizens because... Of the $1.3 billion we talked about that were scammed out, half of the victims in 2023 were 60 and over. How should family members help the older crowd here from getting scammed? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the first thing is just to recognize that our seniors are vulnerable, right? And that uh, really they need the same protections that we would use ourselves. And so the main thing is to explain those threats and those risks to those population groups. And it's going to be difficult for them to even understand some of these things that we're talking about. But it's necessary that they be aware. And that's the first step. And then secondarily, I would uh, encourage all caregivers or any loved ones of seniors to make sure that you walk through the same steps of protection that you would do for yourself with your family member. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. 
So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash ev9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. I always tell my mom because she's part of like 50 WhatsApp groups and her phone just is constantly blowing up. I'm like, look, before you click on anything, contact one of the kids, okay? We trust you, but we don't trust the rest of the world. And does it get a little annoying at times, right? It, yeah, when your mom is sending you constant links and like, hey, should I click on this or what? But it does help. And unfortunately, you have to do it because you don't want the seniors to be victims in this. Yeah, that's right. And that's good advice. Contact someone that you know and trust before you click or do anything. What are some giveaways that you are being scammed? You know, it's, it's sort of what I've been talking about. First of all, they're going to try to elicit some type of trust. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to get some type of familiarity with you and, and they're trying to get you to put your guard down. And then there's going to be some element of fear. And so if you're on the phone and you're starting to feel fear, then that's a clue. Uh, that's not normal, right? And then the next thing that they're going to do is going to try to put some time pressure on you. And there's going to be some intense pressure to do something right now. And again, that's not normal. That's not a normal conversation. No one in law enforcement, no one in tech support, no one in the government in particular is going to do these things to you. No one uh, of that stature is going to try to get you in a fearful situation and try to get you to do something right now. And then the last thing is they're going to try to make you take some action. And and that action would be to, you know, open up a browser or download a piece of software, click on a link. And it's the combination of these things that should send off the alarms. Okay. If you are being scammed and you feel some of these tactics being employed on you, who do you call? Do you call the police? Is there an FBI number? You know, we mentioned the loved ones. You can call them, but... Even they might be overwhelmed with this. What do we do? Yeah, there are several levels of government that you can call. The first, you need to know that your your Texas Attorney General's office, uh, Ken Paxson, is on your side. And if you just uh, Google up his site, uh, what you'll find is on the Texas Attorney General.gov site, they have a consumer protection area, and then they have a seniors and elderly area. And they have uh, a section in there on scams, particularly for seniors. Uh, Besides the state, you can go up to the federal level. Uh, You can get in touch with the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. And the site there is really easy to remember. It's identitytheft.gov. So if you go there, there's a whole bunch of resources. What's really neat about that site is you can even describe to them what happened on the site. And they will help you come up with an action plan so that you can recover. And you can report it, but you can also potentially recover. And then at the next level, you have the FBI. Of course, if you go to the FBI site, you'll find that you can report scams there. And then the last uh, reference I would give you is the Consumer Finance Commission. And uh, you can find them at the consumerfinance.gov. I know locally here, a lot of the departments, HPD, you think about Fort Bend County Sheriff's, all the big agencies also have a cyber and identity theft department now. So you can contact them as well and open up a case and try to figure things out. And this brings me to the most important question. If you do fall victim to a scam and you do lose money, what happens? Do you ever get it back or is that that's it? You lost the money. Yeah, and I'm not sure of the recovery rates, but I can tell you this, uh, depending on the situation, you may be able to get it back, particularly if you were using a credit card or in some cases, even a debit card. My preference online is to use a credit card because if you think about it, that's really the credit card's company's money, Mm. right? 
first and foremost. And they have, you know, millions and millions of dollars and teams to go get that money back. And ultimately, it wasn't your money, as long as you report it in a timely fashion. Now, I must say that also banks have some protections for debit cards, so you must check with your bank. But the key here is to report it in a timely manner. Typically, that's within 30 days. If you wait more than 30 days, then your chances of recovering any funds go down substantially. When it comes to our cybersecurity, whether it be on phones, on your laptops, computers, are the old days of running an antivirus software scan still relevant? Like, what should we do to make sure we're practicing good hygiene uh, and prevention almost? Yes, uh, antivirus is a good step. It's necessary, but insufficient. In fact, studies show that they're only about 75% effective these days. Uh, so I definitely recommend them, uh, but you can't just rely on that. The other things that we've talked about are, you know, uh, making sure that your system is patched and making sure that it's updated, making sure that you're using browsers that are uh, not the common browsers um, that come with the operating system or your phone. Again, I recommend Brave. Brave is a, a really good browser. Uh, it's more secure than the other ones, the, the standard ones that come with your machine. Now let's get into one of the emerging technologies that you know, it's causing a lot of confusion. It's causing a lot of great content as well. And that's AI. How has AI played a role in scammers getting better and so much more efficient with these scams? Yeah, it's become a real problem. And I think it's going to get worse. But what your listeners need to be aware of is that AI has allowed the attackers to actually fake the voices and even the image of your loved ones. So, you know, the problem is all they need to do is get about 20 seconds of voice and they can get that from a video clip that somebody posts online, like on their Facebook account. And they could take that voice and then they could put it into the AI and then they can make that person say anything. And there's been a rash of scams lately to where the criminals are contacting loved ones and they're playing this recording. And it sounds like maybe your nephew or your niece that was on vacation. And oh, by the way, the attackers know that they were on vacation because, you know, those pictures were posted on the social media. And so while that person's on vacation, you might get a phone call of that person under duress, you know, maybe crying, uh, asking for money to be wired because they're in trouble or maybe they were kidnapped. And, and then again, they're going to, so they've already got the trust and then they're going to put in that fear that we've been talking about. And then they're going to put some time constraint. And uh, those are a dangerous combination and might make you take action that you otherwise wouldn't. I have to tell all of my relatives that if you ever get a call from me and I sound like I'm in trouble and it's not from my phone number or one of our trusted contacts, don't even give it a moment. Don't give it a thought because I understand, you know, doing a podcast, being in the media, my voice is out there and it is something that scammers could use, right? And it's so scary. And you just think about these disgusting acts and scary acts. You know, who exactly is doing this? Like, do we know who these scammers are? A lot of times it's organized crime, uh, either in our country or in other countries. Mm. And uh, that's very difficult to track down, particularly in other countries. Um, but because of the technology these days, you really don't know where they're coming from. Most often it's overseas. Oh, that is so scary. Dr. Harper, final few questions. What are some other scams that we should be aware of? You know, one that I would mention is um, that you just made me think about is people are using AI as well to emulate other businesses, maybe local businesses in your area. You think that you are, you know, paying for someone to come out and, uh, you know, assess your, your driveway or maybe cracks in your sidewalk. And actually, that's just AI voice. It's really not even the company. Oh, wow. Uh, so that's a scam that's becoming common. Other ones uh, that are quite troubling, one that I recognized recently was uh, we call it a, a death scam. Unfortunately, whenever someone dies, that's public information. And so the scammers can get a hold of that. And then they'll often reach out to the loved ones and they'll offer like uh, cremation services or funeral services. And actually, they're just scammers. Oh, wow. And they're trying to hit people when they're really vulnerable and willing to maybe put a deposit down to get the process started. 
And that little $500 that you think that you're sending, you know, to your local funeral home is actually going to a scammer. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, business scams are really on the rise. And again, we've touched on that. If you are in a business or you have any type of uh, authority in your business, in particular to transfer funds or to handle funds, then you're a target, whether home or at business. And you need to be aware of that as a consumer, but also as a business person or professional, you need to be aware that you are a target. So you need to have your guard up on everything that you do because they would love nothing more than to go through you to get to the company funds. Wow, that is so scary. Dr. Harper, tell me more about you and how people can reach out to you to learn more about cybersecurity. I can be reached at my website, which is alanharper.com. That's A-L-L-E-N-H-A-R-P-E-R.com. You can also reach me on Twitter or now X. My handle is at Alan Harper. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for giving us some tips, some recommendations and equipping us to handle some of these scammers. And again, if you think you're in trouble and you're afraid about something, look, don't send the money. Don't click on those links. Just take a deep breath and figure it out. Yep. It's been my pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. That was Dr. Alan Harper of T-Rex Solutions. So did we miss anything in this episode when it comes to protecting ourselves from scams? Share your tips with us with the contact info in the show notes. And while you're there, you'll see info on our April 5th live taping before the Rockets game. So get your tickets so you can attend the taping and the game with us. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something new. Oh my gosh, I cannot talk.